Hi everyone, I'm Emily Teague. I'm a fashion and portrait photographer, and today we're going to be talking about editing in different styles. It's pretty common for me to edit a photo one way and come back six months, a year later, and re-edit that photo, whether it's for a demonstration or I'm just wanting to play. And I find that my editing is never quite the same, which is kind of cool. We can create mood and tone through our editing to help take the image where we want it to go. And if you gave the same image to 10 different photographers or retouchers, you're likely gonna get some really different results in there. So for today's episode, I'm taking one of my images and showing four different ways to edit it so you can see the possibilities of different approaches. I'll be editing in Capture One, but the approaches I'll be showing are applicable to any software that you're using. Okay, so we're here in Capture One version 22, and I have this image that I shot in Cape Town, South Africa, of this lovely model. The version that I have pulled up right now is my final edit, so this includes all of my Capture One adjustments plus my retouching adjustments. And this is the original file. So you can see quite a difference already. And now we're gonna do four more adjustments, um, four more edits. And that way it'll kind of show you just all the options available um, and, and the ways that editing can really help with mood. And yeah, let's dive into our first one. So with this first look, we're gonna go for something kind of bright and airy. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna warm this image up a little bit just because warmth feels inviting and welcoming to me. Next, I'm gonna skip my exposure because um, normally I tend to go for brightness instead of exposure because that's affecting the mid-tones, but I am gonna add a little bit of contrast first. And then brightness because we're going bright and airy, let's raise it up quite a bit. Right about 15 is looking good to me. Um, and I will say I tend to edit very gradually, so even 15 for brightness is pushing a little bit for me, but I think for this, it's gonna work. And then saturation, we can just leave alone. I never like my images to look too saturated. It starts feeling kind of clownish for me, um, but I don't want to desaturate that because then it starts leaning kind of towards a sadder look, which we don't want for this. So high dynamic range, I'm gonna lower my highlights, which I tend to do. And then, and highlights are the one area where I, where I will go a lot lower. I'm going to the negative 47 for this one. With my shadows, let's play around a little bit. Let's raise our shadows. We'll go up to, about 12 and our whites let's see what that's doing let's actually lower our whites just a little bit because that's going to affect our sky a lot and all these bright areas on the ground um, similar to what our highlights are doing and then blacks let's see let's raise our blacks a little bit too this is a very different editing style from what i normally do but again we're going bright and airy and with that in mind let's skip down to levels and get our highlights on the right hand side we're going to raise that up quite a bit and then our mid-tones, just because I don't want this image to look flat, I'm gonna bring them down just slightly. Right about there, 0.04, negative 0.04 is looking good to me. And then I'm not gonna touch my shadows on the left-hand side, just because that will really start adding in contrast and darkness. We don't want this for the light and airy look, right? Next, I'm gonna go down to my curves and instead of working in the RGB space, I'm gonna work in the Luma space um, because this way it won't be affecting color. So I'm gonna put a, a point right there for my highlights. Start bringing that up a little bit. And then let's put one there for my shadows. I'm gonna bring this down just slightly. And with curves, really, you don't wanna to push too far because a little bit of movement goes a long way. So right about there for me, let's see if what we've done. I'm gonna hold my option key and hit the reset key. And you can see that difference. That's looking really nice. Clarity, I don't think we need to touch for this one. Um, I especially, I don't wanna go too high in clarity or structure if there's a lot of skin detail because that's not gonna help my retoucher out. And then dehaze, sometimes I'll go um, to the right with dehaze and I'll add in some nice contrast and darkness, which again, isn't quite what we want for this shoot, but if I, or for this edit, if I go too far the other direction, it starts getting some really weird stuff for my skin tones and I don't want that. So we won't touch dehaze for this one. And then for vignette, I'm almost always adding a dark vignette, but let's be a little crazy and add a light one for this image, just a really subtle one. That 0.05 is fine for me. And then grain, I think we can skip that. Let's jump straight over into our color. So for color, I'm gonna go to a new filled adjustment layer and over to my color tab. And let's start with our master color. This is affecting the overall image. So what I do with color is I bring it all the way down to the edge to look at the saturation. I just start pulling around to see what looks good. 
And because we're going for this kind of light, airy, almost angelic look, I think adding in some warmth is gonna be really nice. Right about there, that yellow kind of orange, bringing my saturation all the way down so I can see what I've done and then slowly start bringing it back. And I think that's looking nice, just subtle adjustments throughout. And then for shadows, I tend to stick on the cooler side with shadows. Shadows are actually my favorite to play around with because they really add this beautiful richness. And even though I'm going for mostly like warm and inviting, I think if we add a little bit of blue to complement that orange, that's gonna look really nice. So let's bring that all the way down and slowly bring our saturation up. Right about there is looking good. I'm already liking this image more. And then midtones, let's play around there. And every single time, even when I think I'm almost certain about what colors I wanna play with, I do like to just see what my options are. But again, let's stick with our oranges. And for midtones, let's see if we bring it down with our luminosity on the right, what it looks like. Mm, not quite so much. If we bring it up, that's looking kind of nice. We write about just a little bit of a raise for our luminosity in our midtones. And then highlights, I often go with yellow just because I think that's really flattering on the skin tones, but we'll look all the way around. And there's actually, highlights are looking good in a couple of colors here, but I'm gonna stick with, with my yellows. Maybe heading a little towards green, right about there. And I'll raise the luminosity again, just a little bit. Bring our saturation down, start bringing it up. Let's see. And... I think right about there, great. And this is looking very, very orange. So let's see, oh, it looks like our, I was like, what's going on here? Our mid-tones went fully saturated for some reason. So I'm just gonna go back and bring that down. I kept staring, I was like, wow, that's really, really orange. That's not from our highlights, but there we go. So that's looking good to me. So let's hold our option key and hit reset and see what we've done with our color. And it's subtle, but it's really nice. Just a little kiss of warmth. I'm feeling good about that. So let's see what we've done to this image overall. This was our before and our after. So this is looking really nice, light, airy, happy. Um, this is a really good editing style for a lot of weddings if you're kind of going for that. I'm feeling good about this. So let's jump to our next one. For this one, we are going dark and moody, which is more kind of within my realm of editing. So let's look, I'm not gonna touch my white balance for this one, but I'm gonna skip down to contrast. And again, I always like to have a little bit of contrast. And then for brightness, I will add a little bit of brightness because I'm looking at her face and it's a little bit dark. And even though we're wanting this to be a moody edit, we still want everything to be properly exposed and looking good. And then saturation, why don't we lower it just a little bit? We'll take it down to negative five. Highlights, I'm still gonna lower those all the way. Wow, maybe, maybe all the way, all the way. Actually, let's bring it right about to 80. I think that's looking good. Shadows, we can lower those. Whites, we're gonna lower. Let's lower our blacks. And I can already tell this is looking a little dark for me. Let's bring our brightness up just a little bit more. And then we'll continue on to levels. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of highlights, just mostly for her face. And then midtones we'll take down. It's looking beautiful. We'll add in some shadows this time, right to about three. Like I said before, you really gotta be careful with this because if you go even to nine, you can see for me, that's way too much or 12. So yeah, I think even three is pushing it, but still looks good. We'll skip down to Luma. I'm gonna bring my shadows down a little bit. I'll bring my highlights down a little bit. And then for clarity, why don't we add just about five to clarity and five to structure this time. With dehaze, I think this would be a good opportunity to add in a little contrast, a little richness. So I'll bring that up to about five. And then vignette, let's make it a little darker around her, right about there. We don't wanna to go too far with anything, right? So. This is looking good, and, it, and this is just kind of a base edit, keep in mind. I spend quite a bit of time fine tuning and tweaking, so none of these edits are gonna be perfect, um, but it's just to give you an idea of what you can do. With grain, why don't we add some? We'll go up to, let's say 20 with fine grain. This is looking pretty good. And then let's start playing with color, which is really where we're gonna start adding in that mood for this, this kind of darker look. 
So again, new field adjustment layer. We'll go over to color. And let's start with master. I'm gonna bring it down. And I think something in the cooler realm will work well for this. And this green is actually looking very cool. I don't always like having green um, in my images, but sometimes it, it really works depending on what the exposure and the colors in that image are. And so I'm just dragging it all around. I think it's somewhere within the blue to green, right about there, kind of this cyan looks great to me. And I'll drag that all the way down. Skip over to our shadows. And why don't we, I think we'll do cyan for our shadows too. Kind of right about there. And let's pull the luminosity down just ever so slightly. And then we'll lower our saturation. That's looking pretty cool. Let's just see what we've done so far. So quite a difference. And then mid-tones. Again, I think I want to stick to this cooler scheme. Mid-tones are kind of fun because now we're getting a little bit more of our skin and our sky. We'll stick with cyan. It kind of feels, um, it reminds me of like a, a seaside sad kind of story. So I, I like that. And let's play with highlights. Again, I normally love yellow for skin tones, but if we are trying to go into the storytelling aspect with color, I think we'll stick to our, our seafoam green, our cyan, or whatever color you want to call that. And that's looking really nice. And we will lower that. And again, let's check what we've done. So looking pretty cool. I'm going to do a couple things. One, I'm going to go back and add just a little more brightness because her face is looking dark for me. I'm going to go to my background instead of my first adjustment, which I will recall <laughs> color uh, because I'm always so organized here. And we'll go back to my background layer and add just a little more brightness. That's looking good. And why don't we add just a little bit more vignette as well? Looking good. And the one thing I want to do before I move on is her eye is looking a little dark for me. So I'm just going to go and instead of creating a new field adjustment layer, I'm going to create a new empty adjustment layer this time. I'm going to go to my brush. Oh, let's rename it first. We'll title this eye. Go to my brush, I'm gonna do Command Plus to zoom in and press my space bar to hold and move around. And then I'm gonna to go to my brush. You can also hit B on the keyboard for this. And I'm using my bracket keys to just paint in the iris of her eye. If I wanna see where I'm painting, I can hit M on my keyboard and that's gonna bring up a mask. Keep in mind, this doesn't have to be perfect, especially for a demonstration. I guess for me, it doesn't have to be perfect. For you guys, <laughs> make sure you're you're not doing anything too outside the lines. I'm just gonna go to my eraser right here and get rid of that part that fell onto her eyelash. I know I just said, don't be perfect. And now I'm like, but let's make it a little more perfect. <laughs> That's looking good to me. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit M again and that will take away that mask. And so nothing's been done yet, but I'm gonna go over to my brightness and start bringing that up. And let's actually command minus so we can see what this is doing to the entire image. And that's looking pretty nice to me. So this is telling quite a story. Let's see how it looks compared to our original. Sometimes I like to compare before I move on, but I think this is looking pretty good. I might make a few more tweaks. I, I'd make a lot more tweaks if I was gonna use this as a final image, but I think to show you the example of kind of a moodier edit, this is, this is working pretty well. And I just realized I upped the brightness on the eye layer. Again, make sure you're on the right layer. I always have to remind myself of this. So I'm on the background layer and I'm just raising that brightness a little bit. So we have our dark and moody look compared to our light and airy look. You can see it's a dramatic difference compared to my final retouch version. So my version versus light and airy versus a very dark and moody seaside village. Um, let's do another one. So this one, let's go for a more vintage kind of warm look. I'm gonna warm this one up. And let's add in a little bit of magenta for this through our white balance. Ooh, maybe not that much, right about there. And we'll go down to contrast. Let's actually lower the contrast just a little bit this time, maybe negative 11, which I never lower the contrast. So for me, that's like, ooh, but again, showing you differences. And we will up our brightness. 
and saturation, let's just keep it at zero for now. Highlights, I'm still gonna lower just because for this image in particular, there's a lot of blown out highlights that I wanna save. And then for shadow, why don't we bring it down just a little bit? For white, let's bring it down a little bit. For black, let's bring it up. Great, and then we'll skip down to our levels. Let's bring in just a little bit of highlight. Let's actually raise our midtones this time. So what we're gonna get here, because of all the adjustments that I'm doing, is a bit of a flatter look, um, which I don't necessarily like. It is a look, but I'm gonna do some things to make it look a little bit better too. And then one of the things, why don't we just bring this to two um, in our shadows to help, uh, help with that flatness a little bit. We can go down to our Luma curve and I'm just going to lower the highlights a little bit, lower the shadows just a little bit. And then for clarity, because clarity and structure, because this is looking so flat and because it's looking so soft, especially in her skin, let's bring this up to about 10. And you know what we can do? We can do the same for structure. We'll do 10 for clarity. 10 for structure, that's looking good. You know what, let's actually do 15 for structure. And then we can skip the dehaze. We can go to vignette and add just a little bit there. And film grain, why don't we switch from fine grain to tabular? And we'll bring it up. I'm just, let's bring it up all the way. And I'm gonna slowly bring this back down. And I'm just watching the grain change as I'm doing this. I think right about, 20 is feeling good to me. And then to, to add to this look, why don't we dip into our styles and presets? So these are just a series of pre-made adjustments that you can apply. It's interesting to use to kind of see what looks are possible. Um, like that's kind of a fun look. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a new adjustment layer or a, a new layer out of this to lower the opacity. But I think this one right here that's kind of adding to this vintage feel that we're trying to go for. So I'm going to apply to new layer and I'm gonna go up to the opacity on this layer and I'm gonna lower it a bit. I think right about 60 is okay for me. Uh, in my style of editing, um, if I ever was to use a uh, style of preset, it would probably be at an opacity of about 10, just because I really like that subtle look and I don't wanna add too much. But let's see what we've done so far before we add color. So this is looking pretty nice. Let's add some color. So going to new field adjustment layer again, renaming to color, and going to our color tab. Let's play around. So we want this to look different from the looks that we did before, right? We want it to be kind of vintage looking. So for me, I always feel like orange is a really, really good way to get that vintage kind of feel, depending on which, which kind of vintage feel you're looking for. Skip over to my shadows, pulling these all around. And why don't we, I normally, I normally avoid red and magenta just because it can make skin tones look a little wacky. But I think if we stick to kind of this violet color around here, this purple violet, I think that looks kind of nice. I'm gonna lower the luminosity just a little bit and then lower my saturation and just slowly start bringing it up. And this is looking pretty beautiful to me. Do the same for mid-tones, drag it around. And why don't we try something? Why don't we try some red? <laughs> Just because it scares me. <laughs> I think that'll be good, but we'll lower the luminosity. So that'll help it a little bit. And bring it down, slowly bring it up. Looking good. Highlights, let's see. Ooh, if we're, if we're wanting that vintage look, I think yellow and orange again is where we're gonna wanna stick. Maybe something, that looks really nice. That looks like warm, vintage. She's on the beach having a great time. Bring that saturation up a little bit. And this is looking pretty beautiful. I'm gonna go back to my shadow. I'm gonna add a little bit more purple. And I'm gonna lower the luminosity a little bit more. Let's see what we've done, our before and after. So before and after. I think I actually really like this look. Some more we could do to it, but why don't we compare it to our dark and moody look? and we can compare it to our light and airy. 
and we can compare it to my edit. Okay, so we've got three edits done so far, light and airy, dark and moody, uh, vintage something. <laughs> Let's do our last one. And for this last one, we're gonna make this image a black and white edit for another look. Um, but what I'm gonna do first is I'm still going to go through my tools and just properly expose this image and clean it up a little bit. So adding a little bit of contrast, adding a little bit of brightness. And actually, I think for this black and white, why don't we add in a lot of contrast? I feel like high contrast black and whites with a lot of details are always really beautiful. So this edit might look a little much before we fine tune it, but stick with me here. We can skip our saturation because, well, black and white. <laughs> and again, I'm lowering my highlights for this image. I think let's actually lower them all the way to negative 100. And we're just gonna create some contrast here. So to create that contrast, I am taking my shadows down and taking my blacks down and then I'm adding to my whites. And let's bring up our brightness a little bit. Looking good. And then creating more contrast. So let's make our highlights a little brighter. Let's make our shadows a little darker. And I, clarity and structure, I do want a lot of detail in her skin for this. So let's bring those both to 20. And dehaze, let's do it. We can go up to eight. Vignette, let's bring it in. Looking good. I, this is already way too strong of an edit for me, but again, why don't we make this black and white? So I'm switching to my color tab and I am going to enable black and white. And now this is looking much better for me. So why don't we go into our different channels? Let's start with our red channel. And this is mostly affecting her skin. It's also affecting her dress. So I'm gonna raise this up a little bit because I want the focus to be on her beautiful face. We've got yellow, which is affecting um, our background. We'll bring that down a little bit so it's not too distracting. Green, funny enough, it, it's not recognizing green in the image, which for me, the background was looking very green, but it's recognizing that as yellow. And then cyan, that's gonna affect our sky. I'm gonna bring that down. Blue will also affect our sky. You can bring that down. And magenta, there's some in her dress, you can see. I'll bring that down a little bit too. So this is looking pretty nice. And I'm gonna go back to tools now that I have it in black and white. I'm gonna make some more adjustments. One thing that I'm gonna do, the highlights are still looking like a lot for me. So I'm gonna go to my curves and start bringing, ooh, not that much. <laughs> start bringing that down a little bit. And let's go to our levels and pull down our midtones. We can bring in a little bit of our highlights within levels. And let's bring in some shadow. And then similar to what I did on my dark and moody image, her eye's getting a little dark for me. So I'm just gonna go again to my new empty adjustment layer. I'm on my brush. We can title this eye. Zoom on in with our command plus. Hit B for brush and M for mask. And you know what, this time I'm actually, instead of just painting her iris, I'm going to paint her entire eye because it's all a little dark for me. And then we'll hit M to get rid of that mask. That's a great look right there. Um, and now let's start bringing up our brightness. That's looking pretty good. And I think if I was gonna do a full on edit, I would also contour her face um, by making certain areas darker and lighter. But this is looking pretty good for me. I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit more. We can add in a little bit of contrast, although when we start adding contrast, that's also gonna make it brighter, so watch out for that. But I'm, I'm liking this quite a bit. And then why don't we do one more new empty adjustment layer? I actually wanna make her entire face a bit brighter and a bit more in detail. So I'm painting on roughly, very roughly, and I'm not gonna fix this just because of our time limit. And then let's add a little bit of contrast to her face title this face and a little bit of brightness and I think this looks like a beautiful edit so let's compare this to our original we've got and I'll actually show you all of them so we've got our original with no adjustments no edits made we've got our black and white look which I'm really happy with we've got our kind of vintage warm uh, purpley beach look <laughs> and our dark and moody look our seaside villa maybe and our light and airy look, which could be good for weddings. 
And then the way that I edited this, um, which is another look. <laughs> so those are four looks plus five, if you consider mine. Um, and I hope that this was helpful just to see all the variations and all the ways that you can use editing to create all these different looks and moods. And that's all for today. Say hi to me in the comments below because I always appreciate hearing your thoughts and reading through the comments. Or if you have any questions, let me know and I can help out and I'll see you all next time.